All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today I want to do something really fun and offer you a bunch of budget options that do some really cool things that could probably change your commander decks for the better. Cards you probably don't even know exist, and these came recommended by a lot of people that follow me over on Twitter. Okay, the first one I want to throw up is Rabid Wombat. This is actually just one I wanted to recommend because I think it's a sweet card. It was reprinted in Chronicles, I believe. And if you're playing any type of those enchantment-based decks that are trying to stack a bunch of stuff onto one creature, this gives you some amount of redundancy if you don't necessarily own or can't find some of the other popular cards for the deck because this is only, I believe, 75 cents if you want the Chronicles version. If you want the OG Legends version, it's only going to cost you like three bucks or so. So yeah, really cool one to pick up if you're looking for something in those enchantment stacks. All right, this next one is Wall of Blood, and it comes from Nobody Worthy over on Twitter. If your deck cares about power and toughness, losing life, then Wall of Blood is the card for you. People sleep on this card, and I have to agree. This card works with a lot of different things, and being able to pay life is basically a free activation. And it works with the new Gitrog Raucous Ride, so you can draw a bunch of cards, maybe put a bunch of lands into play. There's a lot of fun things you could do with this card anywhere you need a large creature with not having to spend a bunch of mana. This next one, Sarkin's Unsealing, comes from JBud007, who simply says, definitely tops for me. This is a fun card, and believe it or not, I actually played this in Standard when it was legal and did well in a couple of tournaments with it. But if you're playing anything with big creatures, like this just lets you get an extra four damage to target something every time a creature comes into play. And then if you play one of your bigger creatures, then you get to deal a bunch of damage to opponents and all the other creatures, which is awesome. And this fits into stuff like dinosaurs and whatnot that already are playing really big creatures. So it's something to consider and it can be had very cheaply. You can grab this for 60 cents. You can also pick up Wall of Blood for as little as 75 cents. This next one is Citadel of Pain and it comes from B-Brains who says the Zoomer control player must be taught the ways of mana burn. Other than this, I'm a sucker for any kind of color pie break counterspell like Mage's Contest or Withering Boon. We're not talking about those cards right now. We are talking about Citadel of Pain. And this card's actually pretty sweet. If you are one of those players that maybe in your local pod, you have this person that's always leaving mana up because they want to mess with your stuff during your instep. They want to counter your spells. Well, this is going to really put the screws to them and really make them decide how much mana they want to leave up because there's damage coming. So if you're tapping out all the time, then like, eh, no big deal. But if they're trying to leave mana up, this is the way you can get back at them, and it's really cheap. It's only three mana to cast, which is really nice, and it won't hurt your pocketbook either at just $2. Next up is Breast Stealer's Crypt, and this comes from Tayzilla MTG, who says, Have literally any Spellslinger or Enchantress deck with Demir colors and need some passive burn? This bad boy is in there. And honestly, this is a good call. Now, I don't think it necessarily has to be those decks, just anything that doesn't care about playing a lot of creatures. So the more cards your opponents draw, the more chances there are for them to take damage. And if you don't have a lot of creatures, you don't really care. Maybe you have a bunch of token makers, or you're copying things, or you're just playing a bunch of artifacts. Then your deck's not going to care at all about this while you're just really getting to do extra damage to the opponent. It's actually super sweet. And you can get this card for under $4 in a lot of places. Right, this next one's a real fun one, and it's Snake Basket, all the way from Visions, I think. It's an old card, but it also comes from MTG Clayby over on Twitter, who says, Great card for token and aristocrat stacks, almost guaranteed to get an, I'm sorry, what? Whenever it's played. Honestly, you're not wrong. Like, this is one of those cards that nobody's really seen, but whenever you play it, it's like, wait, what? You can spend however much mana you want to just get that many snakes. That's pretty much what it says. And the cool part is, this can matter if you have a deck that just needs snake tokens. Maybe you just need things that have creatures in the battlefield. Maybe you need a bunch of tokens that you need to sacrifice to stuff, right? It fits a lot of different deck builds and it's a pretty low cost item. Like even think about the fact that you could just have it sitting there, your opponent sweeps the board, all the creatures go away and you just make like eight more duders, right? Pretty cool. And it's only $2. All right, Cosmotronic Wave is another interesting one. And this comes from coincidentally, interesting underscore MTG, who says Cosmotronic Wave opens your opponents up for attack and potentially kills any one toughness creatures they have on the bow ward. A bit expensive at four mana, but a sneakily solid spell. I think I agree with this as well. Like this is one of those spells that can basically just clear the way, right? Your opponent might be setting up a bunch of blockers because it looks like you're gonna go in for the kill and they're like, eh, I don't know. 
And you get the added benefit of getting to kill off some 1-1 one, one creatures, where those be tokens or just creatures that happen to be one toughness. And four mana really isn't all that much, and it's only one red mana in the cost, so fairly easy to cast. And you can pick these up for under a quarter in a lot of places. This next one's a quirky one. Reigns of Power comes from T Mac Alpha, and they say Reigns of Power is so flexible, my best EDH play ever, dodging a cyclonic rift by exchanging my creatures with the rift's caster. And that's a really cool use for this, right? They're gonna bounce everything that they don't control, and you're like, you know what? Let me borrow those, I'll give you my couple of chumps, everything goes away, and I get those back at the end of turn. Super sweet. Additionally, you can do some fun stuff with this. Like, let's say the player to your left is attacking their player to their left. And then you can actually let them get their attack in. And then when it comes to your turn, you can borrow all their stuff and get another attack in on that same player. There's some really fun stuff this card allows. And honestly, kind of surprised I don't see more of this since it's only about a dollar. Right, next up we have Sudden Spoiling. This comes from Blue Cheese Scoops, who says, I don't think this is overly obscure, but I've never seen anyone play this outside of my own playgroup, and it's insanely good. Yeah, it's actually not bad at all. I mean... The card is actually just good in what it does, but the fact that you can actually stop opponents from comboing and doing stuff in the middle of things by turning off abilities, maybe you just need to shrink some creatures, or if there's a chance you think they're going to respond to something, you're like, you know what, I'm going to do this, then get in whatever's going to happen, and the best part is you get to do all of this for as low cost of $2.50. Like, this is a card that really more people should be playing, but for some reason they're not? I don't know, that's why we're making this video. This next one's a fun one. It's Haze of Rage, recommended by Oingo Boingo Stan, and like, I don't know if they really are, if that's just a fun username, but either way. They say, Haze of Rage is such an absurd enabler for Spellslinger decks. You just need Stormkiln Artist or Burgi or Urbrask with a cost reduction, and you get infinite power and infinite storm count. Yeah, not even to go infinite, right? Like, that's a thing you can do, and those decks definitely want to do that. But the reality is, just being able to do this every turn, once you have like six or eight mana to use it multiple times, like that's gonna give you a pile of triggers and you just keep reusing this with the buyback. This card's actually pretty sweet and pretty easy to get your hands on. Whether you want a version from Time Spiral or the original set in Future Sight, neither one's gonna cost you very much. You can get them both under 70 cents. All right, now this last one I had to choose but I went with Massive Raid. This comes from No Doom, who gave me three cards, but I picked one. It says, why swing with your tokens Xeris makes when you don't need combat? And the reason I included this is for a couple reasons. One, that it's an instant, that's actually really cool. But being able to just deal damage for the number of creatures you have is super good in so many decks right now. Now let's consider the fact that this can target a creature or a player at instant speed. That's really cool, especially if you have 6, 8, 10, maybe more creatures because you're building up all these creature tokens. But additionally, there's a lot of opponents that are playing group hug decks that are just gaining life or preventing damage in some way. And then you also have those other decks that just turtle up and you can never attack them. Well, this kind of gets around that, so you don't even need an attack step. And you can probably find these for under 30 cents on a lot of sites. All right, so there you go, 11 cards that can actually upgrade your commander decks or solve problems for you in your commander games. And I think the most expensive thing we talked about was maybe like $4. Like, you can get most of these for under a buck. So yeah, what are your favorite budget cards that have done a lot of work for you in your commander decks? Because I'm sure there's a lot more we didn't cover in this video. But that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.